and he flashed the camera with a flare. And I thought, oh, that's perfect. Oh my God, it will never happen again. Oh, how tragic that's, I hope they use that take. So we rolled again. How do you know an actor is the real deal? Well, I would say there are different flavors of real deal. You know, there are different, there are people who bring the performance in different ways that are moving and convincing. But, you know, uh, it's it's really those moments when I'm behind a camera and, and I disengage as a technician and become an audience member, you know, and, and I feel a tear in my eye or I have to take my hand off the camera because I'm laughing so hard that it's gonna shake the camera or, or there's a scene in California Christmas that where um, Callie and her mom are in uh, the truck talking about her mom's uh, cancer. And, and every time we did that scene, I just wanted to walk from behind the camera and just go give them a hug. You know, I just had this strong like, oh my God, I'm so sorry. And uh, those are the moments for me, you know, when, you know, or, or also I've worked on movies where somebody played a bad person and, and, you know, I remember thinking on set that, you know, that guy's kind of an asshole. And then, and then later on, like we become best friends, you know, so it's, it's, it's very weird. You know, um, I worked with Rutger Hauer once and, uh, my God, that guy was just amazing. And, and, and this is another one of those things that we could do a whole one of these just with my Rutger Hauer stories. But I'll tell you, one of my favorite ones is um, we were shooting in Brazil and we were shooting out in the, uh, the rainforest near Ubatuba. And we were in a hut and Rutger was standing by a window threatening somebody. And I had a, a low camera angle looking up at him. And I remember I was watching through the camera and he's like, you know, yada, 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 yada. And his chrome was kind of, his gun was chrome. And, you know, yada, yada, yada. And all of a sudden he, he did, he said something. And at this precise moment, he did a gesture with the gun and he flashed the camera with a flare. And I thought, oh, that's perfect. Oh my God, it will never happen again. Oh, how tragic that's, I hope they use that take. So we rolled again and by God, God, he flashed the camera again. And I'm like, well, now that can't be a coincidence. So I, I go up and I ask Rutger. Now, you know, Rutger's a legend. I mean, he did Blade Runner and The Hitcher and Legend and heaven knows what else. And so I'm, there's not a lot of actors I work with where I'm a fan and I just kind of have to not let that you know, surface up, but he, you know, I just thought the world to him. And the other thing is when you get to know him, because, you know, so many of his characters are just big meanies, but he was a teddy bear. He was a, a gentle soul and an artist. So I go up and I say, Rutger, I said, are you flashing the lens? And he goes, oh, I'm sorry. Is, did you not like that? I don't have to do it. And I'm like, no, my God, how do you have that level of control and the geometry to just get that right? And to know that to punctuate that 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 scene, and I was just like, and he was so humble and so unpretentious. Um, he he would ask me, you know, what lens is it? Is it a fifty? Is it a? And I would tell him it was a thirty-five, and he'd be like, and he would play everything inside. The I never had to say raise the gun. You know, you're out. You know, you're you're, you're outside. Your he knew if I told him what that lens was, he knew where he needed to be, um, and. Um, you know, uh, just such an amazing guy. I have to tell you one more story of his. There was another scene where we had a, a plane crash and it was, in another world, it would have been a second unit scene because it really didn't have the principal actors in it. And so it was Rutger's day off. And they had built this nose cone of a plane, a full-size nose cone, and we had a field and they wanted to just put bodies in it. And people were kind of, you know, going around helping the wounded. Um, and, you know, so we're out there getting this shit set up and the director says, Brad, you know, raise the camera. And I'm like, okay. So I lean over and the camera assistant unlocks a leg and I unlock a leg, I unlock this and we lift it up. And then she locked a leg, I locked a leg. And this other hand comes in and locks a leg and I look over, it's freaking Rutger. I'm like, Rutger, what are you doing here? It's your day off. He says, I don't want to sit around the hotel. This is where all the fun is. He, 
I'm sure he didn't get paid. He came out there and he was he was helping them place background. This is Rutger freaking Howard is placing background and locking tripod legs. You know that he was a solid dude, man. And and you know now bless him that he's passed away. I want to tell you that his email address was fartville at aol.com. Hmm. Gotta love this guy, right? <laughs> qualities are you looking for in an actor? It seems like a strange question to ask a DP, but because um, I don't really get to cho choose the actors. <laughs> but things that I appreciate, I mean, I appreciate their ability to hit a mark. Um, if they don't hit a mark, oh, you know, my poor ACs, you know, especially on the long lenses and the focus. Um, but yeah, I like them to be able to hit a mark. I like them to have a sense that, you know, if we follow their hands that they don't go quick. Because if I'm doing a tilt and they go, you know, lift it up quick, I'm going to lose it. You know, have a nice, you know, let me be able to f understand that the camera is following you. Um, you know, to be able to find their light, to have a sense that, you know, this. if I hold my face this way, I've got good light on it. But if I look that way, I got shadows in my eyes. You know, some people are just, you know, like a, a guy like Rutgers just he's going to be there, you know, but maybe somebody else, I may be like, you know, you have to keep raising your chin because when you put your chin down, I can't see your eyes. Um, uh, you know, the ability to have, uh, again, have, just have a sense of where the camera is, you know, um, especially with things like stunts, but, you know, stunt coordinators can help with that. Um, but, you know, really... Uh, those are the things that I, and of course I want them to be good performers because if, if their performance is crap, it doesn't matter how good it looks. But, I, you know, I work with good actors these days. I don't, it's been a long time since I worked with anybody that I thought was wanting as a, as a performer. You know, sometimes you have the extraordinary ones. Rutger was extraordinary. I worked with uh, Elliot Gould and Lainey Kazan. They were just stunning, fabulous. Um, you know, Josh and, and Lauren were magical, you know. Uh, um, and again, I'm, I know I'm leaving out people who I shouldn't. When I, Cook County, you know, uh, Xander Berkeley, Anson Mount, Ryan Donahue, Polly Cole, you know, all of those leads were just, just amazing. I mean, you know, people wouldn't hate that movie. Not, I mean, everybody doesn't, but the people who just vehemently don't like it wouldn't feel that way if those characters weren't real to them, you know. And for the people who do like the movie, it's tragic for the same reason, because those characters are real. Um, you know, whereas California Christmas was just that perfect, magical escape in the time of COVID for everybody who just wanted that magic. And, and you know, they brought it. And, um, you know, Amanda Detmer, the one who played the mom, you know, the little girl, Hannah, you know, I mean, they were just all of them. Um, uh, David Del Rio, who was Manny, uh, Ali Afshar, um, um, you know, the fellow who played Connor. I mean, that's like, you know, again, it's just, it was just like every one of those person was a hit. And one of the things, it's a little off topic, but one of the things I loved about it, which I credit equally to the actors and to Sean, the director, and to Lauren, the screenwriter, is that all of those characters are sympathetic. I mean, even the ones in with the conflicts, the ones that in a stereotype presentation, you would, you know, they would be the villain. It's like, they were all complex. And if you really thought about it, sympathetic. So, um, you know, I, I just, I, I love all of that kind of thing from a performance point of view. But, but really, again, you know, if you ask me as a DP, it's, you know, hit your marks, find your light, and, and don't move so fast that the camera can't follow you. What do you do when time is running out and the actor does not have the lines memorized? That's the director's problem. <laughs> I, I, what can I do? There's not diddly squat I can do. Um, you know, I, maybe they do, um, you know, maybe they do cue cards. Um, typically, unless it's specified, we don't have a teleprompter. And even with a teleprompter, they'd be looking into the lens. And you could put, you, actually, you could take a teleprompter and put it off outside the lens. Um, you know, I, I don't know if I was the director, what would I do? I mean, I, I guess I would cover it in a way that I could try and be on angles where I could loop it later. You know, I would try, you know, and I, I would simplify the dialogue. I would like cut stuff out, like how, you know, 
can you at least memorize this? Um, and if it was a chronic problem, I guess you'd have to think about recasting. So yeah, that, that's my answer.